poultry industry programme has brought 19 people from across the uh, poultry sector, from eggs to meat to turkeys, and we're giving them the opportunity to meet, integrate with the board, the NFU, and to be able to utilise the skills of the people that are out there on the field at the front edge of farming for the UK um, to really push forward the fact that we've got to feed an extra 50% more people by 2050. We've got a level playing field. Given that we've got young, innovative people like you are in this room today, who's going to take the industry to its next stage of development, I believe the future's bright. I believe we embrace the opportunity and together let's make the future British chicken. Fast food today is 25% of all food sold, 25% of restaurants, 50% of supermarkets. Now, the restaurant industry is not so expensive here, but look what is happening in India, Russia, China. So your future is all about growth. In the United States, 38 out of the last 40 years, the restaurant industry has been a growth industry. Now, you know, it's a tough industry. There's not anything easy about it other than as young and hopefully entrepreneurial uh, talents in this room, you'll find great opportunity because you're in the right category. And you're in an area where you all feel good about doing something that everyone's interested in. You know, we all have taste buds, right? So we all think we know something about food. But for you and your future, all I can say is you got a lot of problems. But without problems, without opportunities. And those of you that are in this business need to be ahead of the curve because your reputation is all you're carrying with you. And if you're producing a product that's not healthy, you can be rubbed out of the game real quick. But I'm an optimist. You know, they say there's optimists and there's pessimists. And uh, the pessimist sees the difficulty in every opportunity, and the optimist sees the opportunity in every difficulty. And uh, it reminds me of the uh, former president of the Stampy Dog Company, so I'll give you the overall picture. And he's trying to get a group like this, his sales organization, all motivated. He said, what's the greatest uh, name in the dog food industry? And they all responded, Spammy Dog Food. He said, what's the greatest product in the dog food industry? And they responded, Spammy Dog Food Company. And the excitement was building. He said, what's the greatest advertising marketing program? And they all responded, Spammy Dog Food Company. And he paused. He said, uh, let me ask you something. With all this excitement and enthusiasm, why are sales down 50%? So I said a word. A lot of young men jumped in the back and said, I'll tell you why, because the dogs don't like it. So, you know, that's what you're in, you know. You got to sell something that's safe. You got to sell something that's healthy. You got to sell something that tastes good and something that doesn't raise prices. So you've got a tough challenge. So I hope the entrepreneurial innovative folks that maybe our little company became this big giant because of an idea. I hope you've learned something that can be beneficial and help you in your own business to future. So, enjoy it. Yeah, he's certainly inspired me to look at things that I do on our business and for other things outside of farming as well. But um, the, uh, the well, we were really lucky to have him to come here today. So, being able to have half an hour, an hour with him and talk about his business find out also that he said that in America that failing um, you know is, is not a bad thing trying and trying again and then you can succeed a lot of businesses certainly in the media training this morning or the, the, yeah, the, uh, the social networking this morning uh, friends of mine Miranda and Roland who are doing the Muddy Boots Foods their business is about effort and passion and then in the end they will succeed. So it's, it's good to see companies like that coming through and getting into Waitrose, etc.